Hi everyone, this is Mingyao from Ozen Engineering. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how we set up a hot isostatic press simulation. This simulation shows you the ability to simulate uh, the process of doing an iso hot isostatic press where in a coupled thermal structural analysis. And this has some pretty nice and unique capabilities in this regard, so I'm going to walk you through the workflow. One of the things uh, I'm using, the current version of ANSYS has the ability to do full couple field transient simulations. This is very much a requirement for doing a hot isostatic press analysis. I'm going to start by loading up the geometry. Let's uh, go ahead and find my file here. And this is my geometry. And then let's go ahead and set up the simulation. All right, here is the model we're going to use. It's a quarter symmetric model. So this is a full cylinder. We have a we have the powder on the inside and we have the, the casing on the outside. So this is the powder encased in, in a, I'm using a steel powder inside a steel case here. We're going to heat, heat this up, apply pressure to form it into the right shape. So going down this um, model here, the powder, we're going to make this at, uh, use the 316 annealed steel. So if I put in 360, uh, 316 here, and this so will pull from a library of materials. Uh, I'm going to, there's a 316 st stainless, there's a stain 316 annealed, and then we're go for this one, we're going to use the 304 steel. Just a regular 304, maybe uh, half hard. We can look at the properties for each one, each one of these. They all have multilinear uh, plasticity models uh, and thermal temperature dependent thermal expansion coefficients as well as fatigue curve. So quite a comprehensive set of data here. I'm going to use a just a regular mesh here. As it has a, a wide range of meshing options, we can obviously make this uh, hex mesh or tent mesh. And I'm going to change the sizing here. There's a, I'm going to be fairly coarse with this model. So I'm just going to Turn this resolution up to six. We could assign different meshing out different areas, have different types of mesh, but this is just to demonstrate the idea. So I'll use a fairly coarse mesh to get things going. You can see we have a couple field analysis here, and right now we have structural and thermal activated for both bodies. We can also do acoustic simulation, electric simulation, either piezo or charge based electrical uh, static analysis. Uh, but this is sufficient for now. Obviously, the powder here is a regular 316 anneal steel, so it does not have the, um, the, the actual pores porosity defined. So let's go ahead and find our 316 steel. And to implement the, um, the powder properties, uh, we're going to use the Gerson model in our plasticity model. You, you'll find that we can use a variety of models here we can use some of our geomechanic models if you wish, cam clay, uh, extended drocker progger, porous elasticity, or in this case we want plasticity and porosity. So I'm going to add the Gerson model, just double clicking on that, we'll add the Gerson model here. The Gerson model needs a few um, coefficients here, so we can, I'll, I'll put it in, but you definitely want to model this after the material that you're using. So let me look up what I used previously here. So I'm going to specify a yield of uh, 8.75 e to the 8. Initial pro porosity is 30%. And then we have to in input the first, second, and third Tivagard pro uh, parameters. Tivagard Needleman parameter. Now I have no idea what these parameters are, uh, but what you should do is do a series of tests at different temperatures and pressure and see 
how that changes the porosity and the deformation. So uh, we can easily t use these, turn these into parameters so you can check for ranges of it. We even have a full op optimization algorithm that allows you to search for the parameters so that it can fit your data. So if you have, say, six or seven or ten sets of data, you can run simulations based on your test conditions, fit these uh, parameters to those test conditions and, and see what they should be. I don't have any equipment for measuring any of this, so I'm going to just use some of these uh, parameters that I found that may be relevant to this model, or it may not be. So really, um, the parameters need to be defined. So now that we have defined the parameters, we can go in here and you see that in addition to all of the other information we have our uh, Gerson model defined. Okay, now let's set up the simulation. So we can set this, uh, as with uh, all of these type of analysis, we can uh, insert initial conditions, but we're going to not have any initial conditions here. Uh, I'm going to try to replicate an actual simulation of a process. And these process takes a fairly long time, so 27,720 seconds is how long this simulation will take. Um, usually I like to change this to substep, and we'll start with 100 substeps. So you'll divide this, 200, 20, this 27,000 seconds in, by 100 and start there. And at most, I want to take 1e to the 5 here for... Um, for the maximum subset calculation. Here we have a few more options here. One of the key ones here is large, large deflection. If you want to see buckling, you need to have this large deflection on. Obviously, buckling is a fairly nonlinear event. It's a very nonlinear non event. So leaving large deflection on takes more time, and could, uh, but it gives you the actual buckling behavior. I'm going to turn this off now just so that it runs quickly. You can certainly turn it on to see the full buckling of the outer shell, which could be of interest. We also want to turn on these uh, additional results, um, especially for general miscellaneous. There's some uh, porosity information that we may be interested in later on. Okay. So let's go ahead and set up our simulation. Um, I'm going to go into surface, select the, these surfaces, and put in a symmetry boundary. I guess frictionless support is is a, a good approximation for a symmetry boundary. Then we're going to select the outside of this. So let's see. We want to. We should have another support here. So let's go ahead and support this one node here. Do a fixed support here, so this does not move. Now we're going to add the pressure and the temperature. So let's go ahead and add maybe the temperature on the outside. So we can copy and paste. This is an Excel spreadsheet, so I'm going to copy and paste my data in here. So initially we have a heating up phase, holding at a high temperature and dropping down, cooling it off. Uh, this is I'm applying this temperature directly on the surface, so it'll heat up fairly fast. Another way to do it, if I'm heating this using a blast furnace or air, is to use the convection coefficient. So let, let, let's do that instead. So I'm going to go here and uh, use the convection function here. So the time is still the same. Here are the steps I want for my time. The temperature is like that. So we're going to heat up to 1,000 degrees. And I don't really work in units per watts per unit millimeter because the values tend to be large, uh, but I, let, let's say we have 100 for all of this. So a fairly active convection, assuming we're <clears throat> using like a convection oven type of setup to heat this device up. Next, we want to assign the pressure to this. So let's go ahead and select those same surfaces and insert a pressure. right at the top there. So I'm going to copy and paste a pressure profile in here 
and it's done. Oh, but this is in mega Pascal, so let's go ahead and change it to switch the units up a little to mega Pascal. So five to 100 mega Pascals. And that's our setup here. So let's see. We're going to heat this up and we're going to run this over uh, 27,000 seconds, uh, broken up into 100 time steps. Okay, the simulation is all set up. The one other thing I want to discuss is the material for our Gerson model has additional properties. So we can define a void based coalescence or nucleation strain control or stress control nucleation. So the merging and coalescence of different uh, voids can be modeled. Uh, that requires additional testing and data that I don't have, so I'm going to ignore, ignore that for now. So let's go ahead and run this analysis. Keep an eye on the force convergence curve. All right, the simulation has completed. Let's take a look at the results. Take a look at the deformation plot. Want to get rid of the wireframe, so and maybe exaggerate this even more. Let's slow it down to say ten seconds. You can see this uh, part as it heats up, then we turn on the pressure, and then cool it down, and we have the shape, the final shape here. We can also look at the temperature plot. So heating up. Increasing pressure or holding the high pressure and then cooling down. You can see that there is slight difference between the outside and the inside at different uh, temperature locations. So here is the temperature heating up. Eventually the temperature equilibrates. Finally we have the, the cooling down cycle. There are a number of other uh, variables available so if we look on the worksheet here here's a full set of our of the results that's generated um, thermal strain uh, a couple field information forces I don't think the porosity is included. That may be because I needed to incre include some additional uh, factors for the for the Gerson model to to get that information. Uh, if you're interested in more information about the Gerson model, check out the answers help. There's pretty extensive information on the Gerson model here. Including fairly in depth um, information uh, from the ANSYS uh, help or training manual, including things on the void fraction, car new models, as well as the, the Gerson material model. So you can put more information in there. Um, but the, the goal of this demonstration is to show the ability to do a coupled thermal st structural simulation with a Plasticity, porous plasticity model like the Gerson model, how you can set that up fairly quickly in ANSYS Workbench. The main challenge is getting the right material properties to run the simulation. Hopefully this was helpful for you. Uh, if you like this video, please uh, give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Otherwise, have a great day. Thank you.